So hello everybody, welcome to video 5 of Behind the Block Season 2 and today we are making the Churn Dash block. So we are quickly approaching the halfway mark in our Behind the Block series and today we are visiting one of my personal favourites. I know, every block is my favourite, he says, but this one, in fact I say that as well, this one really is, but I don't know, I have a special place for this block, I really, really like it. One of the first blocks I ever made when I began quilting and I don't know, I just I have a special place for it. So anyway, now this is the fifth block in the series and hopefully you are noticing the pattern here where the blocks are made up of half square triangles. So we should be starting to become pretty good with our half square triangle construction by now. In the video, I skipped a few steps for the essence of time. However, I will put links in the description to videos in the first series that have some more information about making strip blocks for you. And then the video number one in season two that has more information, like in-depth information about the half square triangles for you. So if you need just a bit of a refresher or this is your first video, there's some information there to help you out. It's dead easy and it's dead simple to make. It's, I promise, it's such a fun block to make. So let's have a look and see what it takes to make this block. Okay then, so here we are with the pieces for the churn dash block. No surprising, this block is made up of half square triangles and some strip units. And this is our centre square that we'll just place to one side for a second. So in the essence of saving some time, I have jumped forward a few steps in the process, but let's just give you a quick recap on what we're doing here. So we're making four half square triangles. So I have my green squares, two green squares, two background squares. I've drawn a line corner to corner on the background squares. And then I place these right sides together, pinned in the corners away from where I'm about to sew. And then on either side of the drawn line, which I know is very faint in the light, but there is a drawn line there. I sewed a quarter inch either side of that line. And then I'm going to cut these apart, but I'm just going to give them a quick press to relax that seam. Now what that does is any ripples in the fabric or any tension issues, it just helps to relax them so that these lay nice and flat and they'll be nice and easy to cut. Pop those to one side for a second. The second thing I have is my strip unit. And again, I have my background fabric and my red fabric. Place these right sides together, pinning if required, and then joining with a quarter inch seam. And we're going to just set that seam. I'm going to be pressing my seam open. If you don't want to press your seam open, then please press as you prefer. If you're pressing to one side, press your seam to the dark fabric so that you don't see it through the background. Or if you're pressing your seam open, proceed as I'm doing. It's important to do what you feel most comfortable with or you're, what you are most used to. Don't feel you have to do something just because I am telling you or suggesting. Let's not say telling, I am suggesting. Okay, so I've pressed my seam open. It's going to turn over. Just make sure that it's fully open. Give it a wee press. Make sure there are no wiggles. It looks fairly straight to me. There's a little thread poking out though. Let's get rid of that. Of course, the biggest scissors you can find for the tiniest of threads. We can set this aside for a second. We're going to get our half square triangles ready. You can do any method you like. You can take a pair of scissors and you can cut along that line, or you can take a ruler and cut along that line. It does not need to be accurate. Nobody is going to see the line and nobody's going to see the seam allowance. So you can literally do anything you like. I'm just using a ruler, cutting it into two bits. Same with this one, cutting it into two bits. Okay, so now we have four half square triangle units that we are going to press open. So just Take a second to just set seams, press these how you prefer, either pressing to the darker fabric or press your seams open. I'm pressing open, but anyway will work. So press it open from the back, then turn it over and just give it a bit of a press from the front, making sure it's nice and flat. You can also press to the darker fabric if you want to push set and then push up like that, that will open up nicely. Again, don't let me tell you what to do. If you feel more comfortable pressing your seams to the side, press your seams to the side. If you like pressing your seams open, press your seams open. This is your quilt, your project. Do as you like. 
I've become a convert recently to pressing my seams open purely because I like it for managing bulk and also I'm finding that when I'm doing strip units like the the red and background one that I just did finding it slightly more accurate to press my seams open I'm finding that when I'm pressing them to the side or to the darker fabric I'm finding sometimes I'm getting a lot of fabric stuck in the seam and I've watched many videos of quilting over the years and I've seen many people pressing things and lots of people just wham bam you know and away they go and other people are more meticulous and they take their time and they make sure they don't stretch and distort and it feels like for some people whatever they do turns out fine for me however it feels like this is a little bit more accurate so i'm going with this just now who's to say i might not change back in the future you never know but for now those are my half square triangles now we need to size these up two sides so we're going to trim one so you're going to place the darker fabric to the top there get yourself a square ruler if you have one that's the exact size you're trimming that makes your life so much easier I don't happen to have one, so it is not a problem. So we want to square these up to four and a half inches. Oops, right we're in the first time. So the first cut with these is not about the size, okay? The first cut is about getting a straight edge. Now, I have a masking tape ledge on mine that goes along the 45 degree line of this ruler, and that helps me to make sure that the seam is straight so that I can assure that these lines are straight. There are looking for three things here before you make any cuts. You want to make sure that the size of the HST is bigger or it's past the line that you're going to trim to the final side, okay? That's very important. So you need to make sure here and here that it's bigger and past the line. And then you need to make sure that this is in the seam. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a wonky HST. I also like to pull my ruler a rotary cutter that way as opposed to going that way because I have a habit of cutting the corner off my ruler so I go that way this makes it easier now flip it round we know now that this side is straight so we are going to line up our four and a half on the bottom and on the left edge we're going to make sure that our 45 degree line is on the seam or our fab, uh, fab masking tape ledge is on that seam Press down with your hands and then trim. Okay, very little comes off. And there's your trimmed four and a half inch half square triangle. Now I will say this again, and I say this in every single video. If you are not comfortable yet with making half square triangles, please, please, please make your starting squares half an inch to an inch bigger. And that will give you way more fabric to trim. I've made lots of half square triangles over many years, so I'm pretty comfortable with only trimming off little slithers. And that's fine for me, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, please, as I say, make it half an inch to an inch bigger. Don't worry about wasting fabric, just get your cutting technique down. And then when you're comfortable, you can start to slowly reduce the size. Okay, so repeat this for all of your half square triangles, remembering that the first cut is not about size, it's about straight edges. Is there's our four half square triangles and there's my waist. So just set those aside with the center square for now and we'll work on our strip unit. So we are going to cut ourselves some strip unit from this. They need to be four and a half inches square to match the half square triangles. This line is pretty straight, but what we want to do is just make sure that it is perfectly straight. In this case, it's just a little bit off. So we're going to neaten that up to give us a straight edge to cut with. So just line that top line up or with a line on your mat i'm going to line up a line on my ruler so line up with the top line up with the window line up with the bottom and then you know that you're straight and just take a slither off the edge and it's not about cutting masses off it's about just getting a nice straight edge now whip that round grab your ruler and find the four and a half inch line line it up against the edge there make sure the top is lined up there's a line all going along the seam so you know you're straight and a line going along the bottom so you know you're straight four and a half inches and cut voila now we need four of those 
If you find when you're cutting at any point you feel like the edge is not straight, give it another little trim of a, a tiny little bit off just to straighten it up and neaten it. There is a bit of give in this. There's some excess fabric left, just in case you have any problems. I can see here that this edge has gone a wee bit squint. So the bottom is just a little bit bigger than four and a half. Okay, so what I've done is I've just flipped it around and I've relined it up in the four and a half with the centre line. I'm just going to trim that off. So you can see it was a tiny little bit. I mean, like, was it worth it? Maybe not, but right then. So now we've got all this out of the way, let's get rid of all that stuff. Did you know that cutting masks make a great tool to clean up all your threads? Now let's lay this out. So we start with centre square. The reds go into the middle towards the centre square, like so. And then we take our half square triangles and we place them with the green facing in, like so. And that is your churn dash. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Now we're going to take these, place these right sides together, chain piece them through the sewing machine and then leave them connected and then join these columns on and then snip everything apart and then we're going to press, okay? And just be careful when you pick it up, make sure everything is going in the right direction. It's very easy to get this bit mixed up. I'll be back. Here we are, they're all sewn. They're all chain pieced, so we're just gonna cut them apart. Now, if you are going to press your seams to the sides, you will want to alternate your rows, okay? So let me just lay this out before I press it. So first of all, everything is in the right place. Always a good sign. So if you're gonna press your seams to the sides, you'll find that the seams naturally will go in the way on these rows, away from the half square triangles because of this little bit of bulk here. So press your top and bottom rows in the way and press your middle row out of the way, which it wants to go anyway. And that will allow you to nest these together. If you're like me and pressing your seams open, then that doesn't matter. So let's press these open. I sometimes find getting the edge to open up can be a little bit footery, but once it gets going, it's fine. And this seam here is double sewn because somebody didn't check that the bobbin was full. Even though the sewing machine was flashing at me telling me that the bobbin was empty, I was like, no, no, I'll have enough to make this. Well, unfortunately, the universe had other plans. There we are, lovely. Okay, so just repeat that for everything. Pressing open or pressing to the sides. So when I'm pressing my seams open, I will press from the back to get the seam open and then I will turn it over, make sure that it's fully open. Sometimes I'll just give it a little gentle, a gentle stretch. Okay, so go tug in this like a rope. Gentle stretch just to make sure the seam is open. And again, turn it over, make sure everything's okay. Just gently pull, place back together. And now we join the rows together. So we just place these right sides together to make sure we get sharp, sharp points here. We want this to be nice and sharp. We don't want any kind of red showing up on the blue like so. We want it to be really good and sharp. We are gonna pin. We've gone all the effort so far. We may as well go find a little bit of effort and get it nice and perfect. So if you're nesting, nest away. If you're open seaming, then do your thing. And then because I like the chain piece, we're just going to flip this round and we're going to pin the other side on. We will then be able to just cut thread and sew it again without having to come back and pin. See, it's about batching things to make things faster. And don't worry, I know it looks a bit higgledy-piggledy, technical term, but I will smooth it out as I'm sewing it. Okay, so let me go sew and I'll be back. Okay, so here's the finished block. Not showing you the front, so I'm going to be mean. We're going to start at the back. Now, if you are pressing your seams to the side, you'll probably find that they want to go in towards the middle of the block because of the seams on the half square triangle. So just let the seams go the, the way that they want. You see how they are sitting kind of flat already. But again, I'm pressing my seams open. A little shot of steam would be good as well, except there's no water in my iron. You can give it a gentle press from above, just pushing straight down with your iron. Just get everything nice and flat and then fix anything that you've broken like that. And ready for it, one, two, ta-da. Look at that, wow. Pick off all the threads. This is excellent, I'm very pleased. So give it a little press, get it nice and flat. Gentle tug if you need to. 
just to open up any seams if we're not to stretch those corners isn't that just beautiful i'm so pleased with this you guessed it it's one of my favorite blocks i know i know but i just i don't know there's something about the churn dash i like especially when you have these really strong contrasting colors now let's just talk about two quick things to watch for okay these points you do want them crisp these are good they're not perfect they're good okay this is just like in 16th of an inch off uh, so it's fine when you are sewing these together just take your time as you go over any bulky seams you know like at the start and the end here it's a little bit bulky and you might find the sewing machine wants to do that a little bit just take your time go slow and use your foot lift it up and push things under and use a stiletto if you need to to keep it nice and flat second thing we want to watch for is these points on the outside we just want to make sure that there is a quarter inch from the point to the edge of the block so if you need to trim this down to size for any reason just make sure you do not trim this here and take off too much fabric because if you don't give yourself a quarter inch here you will lose the point of your turn dash and then the effect is lost so just make sure it's got a quarter inch which mine all seem to be fine this one here's a little off i think i think the side of the block is just gonna be wonky but we will make that work do not worry anyway the churn dash okay so those were the construction steps and as i said to you it was a piece of cake now as i said frequently throughout that when it comes to pressing your seams please do whatever you prefer to do when it comes to it i have started taking to pressing my seams open I'm just maybe going through a phase or something like that, but that's what I'm happy with doing just now. If you don't want to do that, please do press your seams as you would normally. So either to the side or whatever other method you use. If you want to try pressing your seams open though, there are a couple of benefits, like I mentioned, um, to do with the bulk. It helps with bulky seams. And for me, as I said, I'm finding when I'm doing strip units that my strip units are coming out straighter. There's less fabric stuck in the, the seam as you try and open it. I find I spend an awful long time when I'm doing strip units, ironing and ironing and ironing, trying to get the seam fully open. And by the time I've done that, it sometimes is quite distorted. And so therefore I feel like I have to start again. So yeah, I'm finding that for me personally is working. So if you're open to it, give it a try and see. And if you like it, then why? that's fabulous. If you don't like it, then, you know, you give it a try. Now let's take a look at a couple of quilts that we can make using this block. And I hope and pray that by the time we get to the end of this, I will not be wanting to make another one of them like the last video. Okay, first example is the most basic example, just using the basic churn dash block. And I have put some sashing in between the blocks so that they stand out and they're not joining together. So you can see it's very nice, very symmetrical, nice layout. And you could do lots of lovely things with the quilting for that. And you can sort of see secondary patterns popping out here and there and yeah you know simple and easy now let's look what happens to the same design but let's remove the spacing between the blocks and you can see that it definitely starts to form secondary patterns and actually when i look at this i don't actually see the churn dash anymore i actually see the secondary pattern so you have what looks like a snowballed square the name of that box gone right out of my head but the square with the four triangles around it and then you have this kind of striped effect that looks like a border. So actually, it makes a very interesting looking quilt because you get this kind of border sashing effect where the orange and the grey come together. And then where the purple is, you get this other effect. So it's just it's interesting how playing with the spacing, either adding it or subtracting it, can create a different look. Now let's start to play with the block a little bit and take it beyond just the basics. So here what we've done is it's still the churn dash and there's no spacing with it. But what I have done is I've snowballed the corners. So you can see where the purple half square triangle is, I have added a gray snowballed corner to it. And so that creates this very, very nice looking central pattern in the purple square, where you can see there's now a gray square forming. And I think it's very nice. I think that making this block and then snowballing all those half square triangles would probably be quite tedious to do. But I think it creates a really interesting visual effect. And depending on what the color you use to snowball those corners, you could really create something very special here. 
Now for our third example, again, we're playing with the spacing here. So now I've inserted back the sashing in between the blocks. And you can see now this creates a very different look. And I love this one. Love it. Uh, you can see I've still got the snowballed gray squares, but where before we had the gray square forming in the middle of this block, you can now see it look, it's all divided up. And I love how this looks. And I can imagine how you would quilt this in these the spaces. I think this is very, very nice. But this is an example, and I love these kind of examples because it's still the basic block, but with a little bit of tweaking to the layout, the spacing, and adding a snowball on the corner, it now creates something that looks much more complex and much more difficult to put together. But actually, we know that it's just the basic block with some snowballs. Now, I take it another step further and add some cornerstones. So all I've done is I've added a purple cornerstone to the sashing and now it creates this effect. And actually, when you look at that block that's in the middle of the purple, it kind of looks like a little baby churn dash. So it's a secondary pattern that's a nod to the main pattern and I love when quilts do that. It's such a clever little way of reminding the person that's looking at the quilt pattern that this is made up of churn dashes because when you immediately look at this, you don't see the churn dash. And then let's look at our final example. Going back to the very first one, so just the basic churn dash blocks with some sashing in between them. But I just wanted to show you what happens when you played with the center of the churn dash. So when we constructed this, we just used a plain background square. But what happens if you put a pinwheel in the center? or a four patch, or a nine patch, or any other kind of block that you can imagine. As long as it turns out to the size that you need to construct the block, then you could do anything in the center here. So I just put a pinwheel in because, you know, I like pinwheels. And yes, I know this technically might not be a pure churn dash anymore, but this is one of these things where you take a basic element, you tweak it, you add to it, or you subtract to it, and it creates something different. And again, you could play with this and you could add the cornerstones back in to give another effect. You could add the snowboard corners. You could do lots with this. So those are the examples. And I really wanted to work hard this time to show you minor tweaks that make big differences. I, just even the powerful effect of adding sashing between blocks. So we don't always need to bake the most complicated quilt block or the most complicated quilt pattern. Sometimes, just adding a snowball to a corner will completely change the look of your project. So I hope you like those quilts and I will try very hard not to make that one that I really like, but I can't promise anything. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed those and I hope you find them inspirational and they give you some ideas for your projects. So there you have it. Those are the quilts that you can make using them and they are very attractive. I'm trying very hard not to want to make one of them. I confess, I did go away after the last video, video number four, with the Ribbon Star, and I designed a quilt that I really like. We took on the fabric arriving to make it for winter for my living room, which led to then making another one because my partner decided that we shouldn't have two of the same, we should have two different ones, so I had to design a second quilt. Hardships, I know somebody has to do it, somebody has to do it, but I will cope, I will survive, I will struggle on making quilts. Anywho. So that was block number five, churn dash. Done. Number six, we are looking at the eight pointed star. And this is another fun little block. And there are a couple of different ways to make this block that involve partial scenes and diamonds and stuff, but we're not going to be doing any of that. No, we're going to be taking the easy way to do it. So I'm looking forward to making that one. And I hope you are too. And if you're wondering what on earth we're talking about, you will find the link in the description that will allow you to sign up for the mailing list and it will get you all the fabric requirements and all the cutting instructions that you need to, to take part in this series. And then every 15 minutes, the system will send you an email to your co-op with the latest video. And in each email, you'll find a PDF with step-by-step -step instructions and pictures that are going to help you making these blocks. There is a coloring page on Prequilt, my favorite quilting app that you can use to color your sample quilt and make it into your own. What else do we need to know? So that's it. Nothing more to say. That was a churn dash. Piece of cake. Oh, hungry now. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun making it and I hope you will give it a try and I can't wait to see what you come up with. If you're sewing along your Instagram, I'd love if you tag me and show me what you've been making. Use the hashtag behind the blocks too. Tag me the colorblind quilter so I can see what you're doing. 
And if you liked this video, you thought it was helpful, you thought it was fun, then it really helps my channel if you could just give that like button a little hit. And then maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on video number six or anything else that comes out on this channel. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had fun sewing. Can't wait to see what you're making. Take care and I will see you soon.